Hello and welcome to a Dwarf Fortress tutorial on Adventure Mode. There are loads of tutorials and everyone always plays Fortress Mode, but I thought today we would uh, explore the little lesser known Adventure Mode with Dwarf Fortress. We're going to be using the um, the Lazy Noob pack for this one. We're going to be using the, uh, where is it, uh, Phoebus is going to be our tile set we'll be using for this one. We can play this course in ASCII if you are a purist, but uh, for ease of, of new lookers, we're going to go with Phoebus, and as well, we're going to be using um, Sound Sense to help with some of the sounds. But uh, anyway, let's jump in here and and get started with this one. So I'm going to try to be as concise as possible, and uh, we'll jump in here. We'll get a bit of an adventure done, and, and uh, as much as possible, getting sort of a at least an overview for uh, for new folks. So like Fortress Mode, we're familiar with Fortress Mode. You send out your dwarves, you build yourself a fortress and you go and, and have some fun. Well, adventure mode, you take a single person, human, dwarf, goblin, birdman, and you terrorize the world, or, or you go and sing around. You can do really anything. And that's that's the key point that you have to think whenever you go into adventure mode, is there's not a set goal. It's clearly a sandbox uh, sort of thing where you're going out and you're doing whatever you want. You have to sort of make the fun yourself. So, like in Fortress Mode, now we can uh, use one of our worlds from Fortress Mode, which I think is the most fun way of doing that. But for this one, we're going to go ahead, go ahead and create a world here that we will be adventuring in. Uh, if we had used a world that we had a fortress on, we could we could visit our fortress. We could even start from our fortress and hire our dwarves from our fortress and go out and doing adventure mode sort of things, kind of blending the two. Uh, but I'm not going to worry about any of this. I'm going to try to keep it simple. Don't even worry about it. Just, just let's just jump in here and get the thing going. Again, Dwarf Fortress, all your keys that you can use are here for you. So we're going to press Y, and we'll start building our world just like you would in Fortress Mode. You're familiar with, if you've played Fortress Mode, you're familiar with this, of course. If you're not really familiar with how to read this, um, gray mountains, we got brown is the roads here. We've got a necromancy tower here at the eye. Um, there's another um, bunch of elves over on this side, the, the yellow over this way, the elves. And there's a goblin fortress down this way. Um, what is this one over here? That is a dark pit right there and a volcano, the tooth of stirring right in here. But anyway, this is fine. This is a perfectly fine map. Let's go ahead and uh, use the world as it is. If we could just let the thing run all the whole way through, but it's fine. Let's go ahead and start off. So as with, uh, you know, we're familiar with this, it'll bring us back to the main menu where we can go ahead and finally jump into adventure mode. This is where we make the choice. Adventure mode, fortress mode, or legends mode. Uh, the I would highly recommend you start getting familiar with legends mode once we get into adventure mode. It, it will it'll come across times whenever you want to know more about the item these folks are talking about. Maybe the person that you have recruited to follow you is a really good fighter and you want to figure out what all he has done in his past, you can pull it up in Legends mode and figure out more about that guy. But we're going to keep it simple today and just jump straight into Adventure mode and uh, select ourselves a character. So, roguelike style, we're going to be choosing a race. We'll be choosing our stats, like are we a good fighter? Are we do we are we strong? Are we agile? Are we uh, are we maybe we're uh, maybe we're, we're not a fighter at all? Maybe we're a singer. Maybe we're a poet. We join a troupe. We go around singing to um, uh, playing the drum. All kinds of different options here. We'll get into that. I'm going to go ahead and move down to a human. Though There's not a lot of differences here. Well, I guess there is a lot of differences here. The main differences are dwarves, elves, and goblins are all small. So if you come across equipment that says it's small, they can wear it. Uh, if it's not, then humans can wear it. And, and there's a few other folks in here. Um, we can... Great Horned Owl Man apparently are part of the elves over here. Where it shows up blue is where you will be beginning. Uh, your your quest, unless you choose an outsider. But we've got humans, for instance, right over here. We saw that human town before, right? They are going to be right in here. There's also some down to the south. We saw a human spot down there. Um, we can also, if you um, feel like being brave or a little crazy, you can choose to be a, uh, a brown recluse Spider-Man. And he does have eight legs, and he is venomous as well. Uh, you can be a chipmunk man. You can be a uh, an eagle man, or that will fly. You can be an elephant man. You can be a fox man. You can be all that. Uh, we're gonna keep it simple today. A human. As for status, we use plus minus sign to change these around. This selects how many points we get to spend on things like strength, agility, how good we are with an axe. We'll stick with. Um, I guess for a new player, we should probably go with demigod because you're less likely to die immediately. So let's go ahead. And press enter to get started. It's going to ask us where are we from. If there was multiple human civilizations, we could choose the different ones here. But there's only the one. 
So we're going to choose the Destined Realm, which is this one here. Or we can be an outsider, which is some guy just from the, uh, the, the woods, I guess. We're going to go with that one. Now, we have 105 points because we're demigod to choose on our attributes. We have 161 points to pick on our skills. Skills would be something like you're familiar with with, uh, with Fortress Mode. Attributes. Let's go with uh, let's go with a fighter on this one. So we're gonna put some points into uh, the, the obvious ones: strength, agility, toughness. These all make sense. They should be pretty understandable what they do. Uh, the only one that's really out of the ordinary that might I should call attention to is social awareness. You're allowed to bring a couple folks with you, and you will want to. You need to bring someone with you to join you in your adventures. With social awareness, you can actually increase that number. More people can follow you around if you wish. Um, yeah, we'll put points in here. We can have musicality. Like, remember, we wanted to be a performance troupe kind of guy. We can do that sort of a thing. Uh, memory, patience, intuition, willpower. Willpower is a good one. Let's just go with uh, a nice round number of... How about a little more strength? And a little more toughness. There we go. So we're going to be a fighter. And what kind of fighter are we? Do we carry a sword? Do we carry a mace? Do we carry a pike? Uh, I, the, the only one I'd really point out would be Axe Man, because you can build... In adventure mode, you can build a house, and, and uh, if, you can always go out and make an axe. Grab a stick, grab a rock, sharpen the rock. You can make yourselves an axe in adventure mode. Uh, you can shortcut that a bit if you just become an axe man, because you can begin with an axe. You can chop trees down with the thing, uh, and that will help you chop down trees, get wood, build a house. Um, let's just go with that. Um, that's good. We can be a uh, put some skills into fighting. The only ones really that are well, I would highly recommend. They're almost, they are musts, is you have to have at least one point in swimming. That way, in case you come across a brook, you don't die from drowning. And also reading, because you never know if you come across a necromancer tower and you have the urge to read a book to learn how to be a necromancer. That allows that. Um, if you want to maybe write your own poetry, you can do that. Um, write your own, but you want to copy books. Writer can do that. You want to be a poet. These are the options down here. Percussionist, you can be a... Uh, a dancer, if you wish to be a da dancer, you wish to, maybe you go around, you don't kill enemies with axes, you kill them with your mighty teeth, you can do that with a biter, you can kick them to death, um, we're gonna pick something a little more, uh, a little more boring today, but, uh, we'll go with, uh, we'll go with just a simple axe man fighter, he has, he knows how to use a shield, he knows how to use armor, he, uh, he, he can, he knows how to swim, yeah, nice, uh, a nice average MCASH Risen helps is the guy's name. We are a newly minted hearth person of the great Neek Dinner Grottos in Blanket Charcoal. A human hamlet. Destiny's calling. You're a faithful worshiper of Irsi, the goddess of gambling. We can always change this up. We are way down here, which is not acceptable. I want to be up towards the action. So we're going to randomize all this by pressing plus or minus. And we can be not out there either. That's out in the middle of the ocean. Let's go with one. Like, Can I get one over here? Here we go. Hearth person of the great Akul Hoosh Pages. A human hamlet. That's fine. A hamlet will work just fine. We are a worshiper of Athrig, the fatal urns, goddess of death and disease. <laughs> Sounds great. Now, the other options here, we can change our first name. If we don't like Amkash, we can select it. Uh, we can change that one out. If we want to just do a completely random name, we can press R. We want to be Quazo Bodus Taper. Fantastic. Uh, we want to be a man. We can do that with G. Be a man. We are Quazo. We can select... A, uh, a customized name by pressing C. This changes our last name. Say we want to be, instead of Bodus Tapered, we want to be, um, let's be, um, how about Dive? I'm just using the arrow keys here. Dive, um, Dive Dove. I'm Quazo Dive Dove. If you want to be a little more exciting, we Quazo Dive Dove the Anger. Escape, done. Hey, I'm, I am Quazo Dive Dove the Anger, new human, hearth person of Akul Hush Pages in Drill Parch. And let's go ahead and get in here. Enter. Done. Now, what kind of person are we? What do we look like? That's the next page. Where we have wavy hair, extremely long, broad nose, extremely long. His nose is bridge, is convex. This is all just role-playing things, just sort of um, our look of our guy. If you don't like the look, you can press R to randomize your guy. Fully randomizes, respecting. Uh, it sort of throws out the base or the... Um, the world building aspect it just makes whatever but uh, we'll stick with this guy he's fine enter done now again more descriptions what kind of uh, things do we like we believe that self mastery and the denial of impulses are of the highest ideals we can also randomize this as well if we want different points in here the only real thing that this does for you say we have a um a modern need to argue 
by by doing that, it'll give us focus, which which can help us out a little bit, but uh, most of this is just for role play. But this is all fine. Enter, go. I personally value artwork. I sure do. Let's enter and get started in here. And we finally got our equipment together, such as it is. Now it is time for action and adventure. In the rush of excitement, you've forgotten where you're going to go. A foolhardy soul might try to rescue the children that have been kidnapped. Perhaps some of your friends here have ideas. This this can change. Sometimes it doesn't tell you about the children being kidnapped, but uh, apparently some in this town have been kidnapped by apparently some goblins out there somewhere. And uh, we could do that. Now, as I mentioned before, this is a sandbox. You make the fun. You do whatever you... Uh, you want to do here and so we want to go save the children we could do that we could go and uh, go for the tower we could we could do whatever we want uh, it's it's worth mentioning there was a question mark will give us all the key bindings that we have in here uh, any sort of your first adventure gives you a nice I would recommend reading through this gives you a nice a nice rundown of some things in town uh, and some just basics for the game but so yeah question mark read this but uh, let's get started here so I am the guy with the axe and the shield. That's me, right there in the middle. You can see there's some bags around here. We've got, we can press L to look around. We have the dancer, Sporo Amazuri, right here on the rock block floor. We have a rope reed bag right there. We have a, uh, a swordsman, Uthal, right up here. We have a hatch, a floor hatch means there's something down below us. We have a stool right there, a copper throne. We have a mace man, Shezpa. We also have a swordsman, Sabu. And there are some pedestals right over here. Some sort of museum or something going on over here. Uh, in the top right corner, if there's something above us, we would be shown up here. On the left side, we have our compass, which tells us where things are. That's when there's a town to our south-southwest. We saw that on the map. That's what that little plus sign is there. There's some goblin pits to our northwest. If we ask about where something is, you'll notice it pop up there. So we can kind of guide ourselves where we want to go. But we're going to use the number pad, uh, numpad to walk around the, uh, the village here. If somebody talks, you can see there's a one over his name now. It means a sword, swordsman, Sabu, you can see the one here, is talking to the dancer, Sporo, right over here. It was inevitable, he says. Um, if we want to join in the conversation, we'll do that in a second. But let's go over what we have. This is a roguelike, right? Explain what we have on our, uh, our person. We have a bronze great axe as our weapon. Our armor is a turkey leather shirt. We can press I, and we can see our inventory. Great uh, bronze great axe in left hand, copper shield in our right hand. We have some wool thongs. We have lots of wool gear on our person here. We have a tiger shark leather water skin, which has three ice in it. It would normally be three water, but it's because it's cold, it's ice. Uh, we can warm that up over a campfire later on. Uh, we also have a leather backpack here, which has some um, some thorn, thorn back rays, which are a fish that we eat. And we also have a large copper dagger in our backpack. Now, the first thing you probably would, I would recommend, if you're going to go on some sort of a, uh, a fighty adventure, would be, number one, you have to get people to follow you. Uh, you can't go alone at night because there are bogeymen out there, and they will kill you, unless you have someone with you. If you've got even just one person, they won't mess with you. So, first job is to find someone to join you. So, let's go ahead and hit K. K is the talk button. Now, you can see we have options that have popped up here now. We can be, begin a performance. We want to be a dancer. We can. That's is where we will dance or shout or sing or whatever. We can shout to everybody. That we're using plus and minus to go through this. We can talk to our god if we wish, or we can just assume I didn't. We can. We can select if we want to be. Say we go walking into an elven camp and we want to sneak into the elven camp. We can pretend to be an elf by the name of whatever we make up and. We just sort of make up our person. We can sneak around that sort of thing. Uh, but what we want to do is we go talk to the swordsman here. So we're gonna use the arrow keys. To go over to him, swordsman Sabu, uh, it Niguki, and press enter. So we're going to greet Sabu here, and you can see the numbers popping up again. There's me. I'm the uh, the at sign here. Hello, Sabu. Long live the cause. Swordsman responds. It was an oh, he's still talking to the dancer here, and then now he says it to me. It's wider. It's good to see you. Long live the cause. Yeah, whatever the cause is, long live it. Uh, the dancer is also talking about several years ago. My only daughter Zaz uh, Zoku was kidnapped from Joe Parch by Bosa Bannermaline. We can talk to him and figure out that if we care about his daughter, but we're here to talk to the swordsman. So let's hit K again. Ongoing conversation with swordsman Sabu. So let's go do that. And we have all kinds of different options. Using plus and minus, you can see scroll, plus and minus. What do we want to do? What do we want to say to the swordsman? Well, we can, uh, we can ask him about any troubles if we want. But right now, we want him just to join us. So let's go to ask listener to join you. 
We want to join him to join us him to join us on adventures. You can only ask soldiers, people that have weapons. They're clearly shown on the map who uh, to join you on adventures. You can also, if you want to be an entertainer or performance troupe, you can do the entertainer thing. But we're just doing a fighter, so let's go with him. Join me on adventures. He's, I say, come join me. The uh, dancer's yammering about something. The swordsman says, I will agree to travel with you if you lead me to glory and death. It is almost certain. The dancer, several years ago, my only son, Rimtil, was kidnapped by... Man, that guy stole your whole family. All right, so now we want to... Let's go and get someone else. Let's talk to the, uh, the the mace man down here. So let's go ahead and plus, start a new conversation. We're going to go down to this guy. Mace man, Shezba. Shezba, forget the greeting. We have, I can press C, and we can see Sabu is a swordsman, and we have Shezba, the mace man here. We've gained them, and they both will follow us. They've joined us on adventures. So we've had followers now, so there's no more threat of bogeymen. So now our next goal is to get some sort of gear, because we just have wool socks, wool gloves. We have leather caps. Uh, leather shirts. If we, can, if we can, we'll see if we can find some better gear. We can press L. We can see these bags over here. And we can press A on the bag. And we can see this bag has rope reed bag, has shield, uh, sheep wool, yarn, and iron arrows. I think there's a bag in there as well. Um, we can go look at this one. This one has a silver spear and a leather quiver. Not really what we're going for. So let me go walk over here onto the hatch. If we want to go down the hatch, just like with fortress mode, you use the greater than and less than signs. We can go downstairs. And all that's down here is a bowman and a hammer man. Well, let's go grab this bowman. Actually, let's um let's see. Let's do a little more talking with the bowman. I'm gonna press X, highlight the bowman. Bowman, uh Heather. Press enter. We're gonna greet Heather. Greetings, Heather. Hello, it's good to see you. Praise rebirth. Let's talk again. So, Bowman Heather. One thing we can do here, we can say, uh, how are you feeling, Heather? I encountered a fascinating conundrum recently. And then when you go press K and go back to her again, you can uh, move on to some more that we can say. Um, acquire about any troubles. Any troubles. Well, we got an army on the march. Abductions, beasts, brewing trouble with our neighbors. Um, let's hit K again and ask her about these things. So we can ask her about the army on the march. We can have abductions, the beast. There's brewing trouble somewhere. Uh, let's ask about the uh, the beast. A great beast threatens to bring ruin to our people. The disemboweled knight is in the Horn of Catches. Seek this place if you hunt Sesta, stood renown, the spit of spring, the Hydra. This Valfine has killed 164 in her lust for murder, which means that uh, she will certainly kill us as well. But what a hero we would be if we went there and killed her. Uh, um, press K again. We can ask her for the whereabouts. Where is this Hydra at? The Hydra is in the disemboweled knight. This is about night is in the Horn of Catches. So, um, as for directions, where is the disemboweled knight? This about night is far to the south. You receive a detailed description. In 104, the elf Sparkle Queen was struck down by the Hydra in the Spit of Spring. So now, now that we have a detailed map, we can press Shift Q and we can find her. It was Sesta Studrenown. That's her right there. So let me find her. We can go highlight her and we're going to press Z center on her. Lots of things in this map, but I'm just going to show this real quick. And there she is, down here in this pit. So now, if we wanted to go find that Hydra, we could do that. That would be a bad idea, but that's something we could do if we were brave. But we're not. And this place has no other boxes, so there's nothing for us here. So we're going to leave this place and we're going to go walk outside with our wool clothing. Our friends will be following us. You can see them following behind us here. So we've got... Sabu right here, and we have Shezba right here behind us. We're going to pick our weapons and put them in our hands. And uh, while we're outside here, we'll show a couple more things off that are very important. You will get hungry, and you'll get thirsty as time goes on. And uh, if you're in the winter like we are right now, we can look around. We can see snow-covered, dense purple moor grass and piles of snow. This is all snow out here, which is why it's so white. But if we wanted to heat some things up, we can press G and we can make ourselves a campfire. Select which square you want to make it in. We'll make it over here to the west, C. There we go, we got a campfire now. Now what do we do with campfires? Well, we hit Shift I to interact. Now remember our tiger shark leather water skin had ice in it. Well, we can press in and it says, what do you want to do with that? You want to fill it with snow? Do you want to heat the leather skin near the campfire? Yes, I do, press D. So we heat the tiger shark leather water skin and what it does is my 
this guy is yapping, whatever. Uh, we're going to press I again. You can see there's now water in it. We have warmed it up. So if we want to drink it, we can press E to eat. And we can select all kinds of things we can eat or drink. If you select your, your axe, you will lick it. We're going to select the water. And there we go. We drank the water. And if we want to put uh, more snow in there, we can go with shift I again. And we can go after a water skin. In. We can fill it with snow. And there we go. Now it is, uh, it's now filled with two waters and a snow. So there you go. That's how you keep your water skin filled up. You can also grab food. Of course, you're going to need both of these things. But what we're going to do now is we're going to go a bit of a travel. Uh, where are we going to go? We probably don't really have much of an idea, but let's just show off the travel map. So we're going to hit Shift-T. This is the overland travel map now. We have this side on the left. You can see us. We're the at symbol right here. We're in the tavern here called the Bearded Spiral. Over this way is some sort of houses or something. The orange spots over this way. Uh, there's another tavern over here. There's a, this is a big town. This is a big a lot of grass. That's a big town over here. Press M, and we can see an overland map here. Press M again and see a bigger map here. We know to the south there's a pretty decent sized town. We can maybe find some people to talk to. We can see there's an Ekermit's Tower down this way. We know that uh, that Hydra is down this way. There's a Dwarven, or actually a Goblin Fortress there. We have a road right through here. Um, but what we want to do is we're going to go south and go find this town right here. that we, we went to the Hamlet there. So let's just use the arrow keys. And we're now walking overland so we can walk a much faster. We'll just follow the river here. And we will come down to this Hamlet. We are out, now at Toastwater, a town. And in Toastwater, we'll cross a bridge here, crossing over the water. And we'll see if we can find a place to stop, which there is. There we go. This is what we want. So you can see all this green stuff is really, there's like fields. You can see the fields. There's not a whole lot to it. But the brown, as we come over here, I'm going to press M again so I get a description of what is around us. I'm using M to cycle through this side over here. Um... We're going to come up here, and we can see there is a bunch of shops. Woven clothing shops, boyer's shop, leather clothing shop, warehouses, bone carver shop, all these different shops that are in here. There is a general imports, gem cutter shop, uh, the lime of cinnamon, which is going to be like a, a tavern or something, and a cheese market, meat markets. We have up here, this thing looks like here, this funky-looking castle thing is indeed a castle. This is some sort of a proper place. There's a nobility here. We're going to stop right here. We're going to press D and stop with the overland travel. And we're going to appear here, just outside town. So here's me. My friends are here. We have a bunch of markets and stores around. We can go and check these things out. Uh, we're on a paved road. We can take a look. You can see this is a rock block floor we're on. We have some wooden walls. There's some doors here. There's a sign. The wood leather shop sign right there. Uh, over here, we've got the woven clothing shop. Uh, here's a gem cutter over here. We have a general imports over here. Let's go and uh, let's go visit these spots. And there's nobody here. And there we go. There's there's nobody inside. Now we could be a thief. We can take a look at the sheet full bag. There is strawberry plants inside there. What's going to be in the chest? There is lots of coins in here. So we could be a thief if we wanted to. Uh, there's also a bed. Where is this guy? Wood cabinet has nothing in it. Um, oh, yeah, it does. Oh, yeah, it does. Buffalo leather armor. I will take it. Um... So, he's not here. I'm going to go ahead and pick up the uh, Buffalo Leather Armor. It has a plus bite. It means it's nice. So, I'm going to grab that. That is going to be mine. It's going to be in my backpack that I have in my inventory. Is there anything else in here we want? There's a vest. There's a coat. There's leather, more leather armor. Reindeer leather armor. There's some even nicer armor. I didn't even see that one. We can press the slash and asterisk sign to go down. I want... I'm getting greedy. I want the reindeer leather armor, the nice one. And we're going to drop the other one. D. D drops. We'll drop the water buffalo one. There we go. And is there anything else that we want from here? A cloak? Okay. Now, we have these things. They're, they're in our backpack now. They're not on us. They're in our backpack. So we can press W and we can wear them. What would you like to wear? I want to wear the leather armor. A. So now I'm wearing it. I'm mean, still going to wear the cloak. And now you can hit I. And you can see we have leather armor on our body. Backpack on our body. We're also wearing a leather shirt, a wool robe as well. We're we're decked out, but it's it's uh it's it'll keep us nice and protected. So um, we don't want to do that when someone's someone's home, but no one's home, so that means it's free for the taking, right? Uh, there's a weaponsmith shop over here. Let's see if anybody's home. You know, just oh, 
Now, if there's a dollar sign by them, it means you have to purchase them. That was just some... This is somebody's, like, room. And uh, he just... I don't know why he left his dresser empty. But there's nobody here. Typically, you have to purchase these things. You have to go up somebody and actually buy it because there's a dollar sign by it. But we're going to try and see. Uh, is there anything here we want? I mean, we have an... What kind of axe do we have? We have a bronze great axe. So... We want to use an axe. There's an iron battle axe right there. Okay. So let's go over here. Pick it up. Um, remove. Remove the battle axe from our backpack, which is S, R to remove, S to get it out. And we want to drop our bronze great axe. Q a couple times. We draw copper shield and our new battle axe that we have stolen. Someone may have a problem with that, but uh, until they say otherwise, it is mine. Now let's go check out that fortress over here. We are now here at the walls of the fortress, and you can come down, you can see down here, as I mentioned before, you can see below us on this side, this is above us, this is below us, and you can see there's a door there. Let's walk in here. There is a, let's take a look, a go tall goblin lasher. He's a, he, apparently he's somewhat friendly, so we'll leave him alone. Let's go walk inside here. And we are now at a great dwarven fort, uh, a great human fortress over here. We're gonna look for the door. And there is a, um, a dead goblin laying there. I'm, I'm, I pressed L to look at him, and then the, uh, the slash and asterisk to scroll through the pages. You can see all his stuff he has on him. He has a mutilated hand, mutilated corpse. This guy had a bad day. Um, it's all small, so we can't wear it, because we're a human. If we were a dwarf, we could wear that stuff. There is a lot of dead goblins in here, and there's some dead humans in here. What happened here? Must have been some sort of raid or something. Um, let's go and see if we can find someone to talk to. I was hoping to find a mayor to talk to, but uh, we can talk to the pilgrim, I guess. Unless I'm just missing him. There's a, a goblin criminal there. There's a lawgiver as well here. Let's talk to the lawgiver. So we're going to put K. Highlight the lawgiver. And we're going to go talk to him. Greetings, lawgiver. My name is Quazo Divedov the Angler. Or the Anger. He says, oh, I'm Kigad Lengthpair. So let's continue talking to him. Uh, any troubles around here? We got the army on the march. Abductions, beasts, criminals, bandits, bone chilling, horror, and bro uh, trouble brewing with our neighbors. How about we ask about the bone chilling horror? Tell me about that. There are foul goings on over at the Tower of Tall Shake. Where is the Tower of Tall Shake? I bet you I know where it is. We can we can tell him like it must be stopped. We can tell him our opinion and how we feel about this place. I just want to know where it's at. It is a half a day's travel to the southeast. Let's pull up our quest map, uh, shift Q, and we uh, we know it's right here. It's um, sites S, and we can find this place if we go to sites. But we can also just scroll down here, and we can see that place. This is Tall Shake right here. Uh, we could scroll through here and try to find it also. But there we go. There's Tall Shake right there, with, which is where the bone chilling horror is, which means that there is evil necromancy sort of things. It's getting ready to leave the town, but as I was walking out, I noticed. Press L here. We have a low cheekbones goblin lasher. No quarter. No quarter means that they don't like us and they will not yield no matter what. So uh, I think it's a perfect time to show off a fight. So goblin, we're gonna walk up to him, see if we can catch him. If we want to, he's running away. You can see he's moving in that direction. We're going to hit shift S. We're going to sprint. We want to catch up on this guy. So we're going to run. You can see our speed down here, which is increased by a lot. We're losing him because he went downstairs down the ramp here. There he is, right there. So he's moving into this square. What we're going to do is we're going to go back into walk mode. And uh, we're going to just press period. To let time pass one instance. So he has jumped ahead of us. So now we press shift A. So welcome to combat. We're going to, we have two, we have three options. We can strike the guy. We can wrestle with the guy. Wrestling would be like if you're going to do like a bar fight. We could do that. We can choke the guy with wrestling. Or we can dodge if he's attacking us, which we're not much of a dodger. So we're going to hit A to strike the goblin. Now... We get to choose everything we do with combat. Do we strike him in the leg? Do we strike him in the head? Do we strike him in the... I'm using the slash and asterisk to scroll through here. Do we get him in the throat? Do we go for the mouth, the tongue, the cheek? We can hit anything. We can go for his lower lip if we want. But no, we're going to go for a... Uh, we'll go with an easy strike to his... I don't need his hand. I want his leg. I want to stop him from running away. So we're going to go with a normal strike to his right leg. Can't quite hit it squarely, but... It'll be all right, so we're going to go with K. 
So with my axe in hand, we're gonna hack at his leg. Press B. And there we go. You hack the low cheekbones goblin lasher in the right upper leg from the side with your iron battle axe that we have stolen, bruising the muscle through the small troke, uh, troll fur cloak. So now uh, he's still going to run away. He's still kind of scared. We can look at him and we can see um, a all the things that are on him. We can see his uh, how he feels. His uh, not that I want that one. I want to see his description. He's a small humanoid. We can see his lower leg is bruised from me. Upper leg is bruised. His nose is mangled beyond recognition. He's been in a fight already. He's blinking. Blinking means he's injured. Uh, her upper feet, front teeth are gone. Lower front teeth are gone. So she's having a bad day. She's about to have a worse day. So we're going to go for it again. Shift A again. We're going to strike. Uh, we can go with a tricky strike to the head, but it'd be square if we could do it. Our friends will join in here in a while, but uh, maybe eventually. We're going to go for D, head. And we can strike with the copper shield. We want us to hack with the battle axe. That's what we're going to do. She rolls away. So she got away. She was able to dodge us. So we're going to do it again. If we want to be lazy, if we don't want to select our strike, we can just run into it like a roguelike. And there we go. We just, we kicked Goblin Lasher in the right lower arm from behind. And we bruised her. And we really hurt her, uh, her right elbow. She loses hold of her iron shield because we kicked her so hard. And uh, she says, I must withdraw. So she's surrendering right now. So I think it's a good time to show off um, some wrestling. So let's grab her with... Um, let, me, let me put my weapons away. Q. And we're going to go A. Wrestle. We're going to grab her with my right hand. And I'm going to go for her throat. Press period to pass time. I've got her. I grabbed her. On the, by the throat with my right hand. Now, we're going to do that again. Shift A. We're going to wrestle. We're going to wrestle using my right hand that's on her throat. And we're going to choke her. There you go. You place a choke hold on her. She is scratching me in my left foot, bruising me. But we're going to keep on, we're going to keep on choking. We're going to go for B, wrestle. Wrestle using the hand. We're going to strangle her now. Pressing period again to pass time. Strangling her throat. She has now passed out. So now, she is unconscious now. We've we've done it. Um, what we can do is we can go ahead and strike her. We have a simple, easy strike because she's unconscious. She's just laying on the ground. We're going to go for the neck. And we're going to... Oh, wait. I don't have weapons out. Escape, escape. I'm going to put Q. Get my weapons back out. Shift A. Strike. Neck. C. We're going to hack. And we're going to do it again. Uh, it's been cloven asunder. Apparently that wasn't enough. Neck again. Uh, hack. Um, Shezpa is laughing in the face of death. Yeah. We're going to go for it again. <laughs> and see if we can take her out. Um, neck. Uh, hack. And she won't die. We're going to do this the easy way. We're just going to walk into her. There we go. She has suffocated. I strangled her. Oh, because I still had hold of her with my other hand. Well, there we go. She has been killed. So we win our stuff. We can look at her. We can see all the stuff she, she has. We could take her stuff. We could go and sell it if we wanted to. But, um, I think it's fine. Oh, she had a bo goblin bone bracelet, eh? I'll take that. E? Uh, yeah, I want that. So let's walk on her here. Press G. And we're gonna scroll through the list. I'm gonna press E. I pick up the bone bracelet and put it in my backpack. I wanna wear it. W. I'm gonna wear the goblin bone bracelet, which is now. I'm pressing I. There it is. I pressed uh, asterisk to go to the next page. Goblin bone bracelet on my right hand. Excellent. I'm also covered in rain because it's, it's raining. So there we go. There is combat. We have killed ourselves a goblin. And now, when we talk to somebody, we can tell someone about this. If we Say we went on a quest and we actually killed that Hydra. We can actually go in here. We can talk to somebody. We can say, it. Um, let's chat with uh, with Shezpu right here. And we can say, bring up a specific rumor, incident or rumor. And we can say, we can tell her about the conflict. About whenever I, uh, whenever I was attacked by whoever that was that attacked me. I don't remember that happening. Uh, in which we killed that goblin. I killed that goblin. The defenseless are safer from outlaws. Thank you. Yes. Well, there we go. This is a, um, that sort of explains what's happening here. A bunch of goblin outlaws are attacking this town, and we just killed one of the goblins attacking the town. So there we go. We're heroes. Um, if we were going to quest to kill the Hydra, we can come back. We could tell the person, and he'd be very grateful if we killed that Hydra. Um, one last thing. Let's go and visit that Hydra. 
Now, if we want to fast travel now, because we have a stolen axe, we can't just walk out with stolen axe. We have to, we have to actually leave the, uh, the region of the town, or we have to go back and buy the thing. Um, but you know what? We're just going to just leave the vicinity of the town. We are a thief now. But, uh, you know, it happens. It happens. If we want to be a good, you know, role-playing character, we could certainly... Should probably be nicer, but whatever. Uh, actually, actually, this brings me to a good point here. We have a river here. We want to cross the river. How do we do it? We can swim across uh, by just walking across. We could climb a tree and try to get across that way. Or we can try to jump it. We're going to sprint. We're going to give ourselves some distance. And we're going to run. You can see my speed is going up pretty high as I move. As we get to the edge, we can press J... And we can jump right there. And there we go. We have jumped across the river. Move our speed back down to walk. Even though our people are behind the river, they will eventually catch up once we go into fast travel mode. Which we cannot... Uh, oh, can I do it? Oh, yeah. Okay, we're far enough away, so we can walk now. So there we go. So now, M, we're going back. We're going to go find that Hydra. While we're out here, I do want to show off building. I got a guy with an axe, so I might as well show it off real quick. I'll just do a quick rundown of how we do it. So we have an axe in hand already. So that is our chopping utensil. We have lots of trees around here. We are out here sort of in the middle of nowhere. we got to get off of the river here. Uh, sort of in the middle of nowhere. We can see the towers over here. The town we came from is up this way. Uh, let me walk a little bit further away from the river here. And uh, then we will start chopping some trees down in order to get ourselves a bit of a, uh, a house. There's a nice clearing right over here. So let's stop here. Let's walk up to this tree. We're going to press... Hmm? Creature of the Night has our people carry in fear. These people talk all the time. We're going to press G. And we have an option here. We can pick some thistle flowers. Or we can fell plum tree, which is this thing right here. So we're going to do that. It's going to take us some time. But we will chop this tree down. And I'll press period. And there we go. Tree has fallen. And there was a big whole bunch of logs laying here now. We can chop a bunch of these down if we want a lot, a lot of logs. But just for the simplicity, one tree will do. We're going to go into press B. Now this is build menu. We have different options. We can make walls, floors, ramps, stairs. Um, we can also make things out of different materials. We can press C, Shift C for constructions, which is what we're at right now. B is for buildings like chairs and beds and uh, bookcases, workshops. We can make all this stuff in uh, in adventure mode. But we want to go Shift C back over here. Let's make some walls. So pressing W, all we have to do is it's actually really easy. Just go over if you want, press Enter. And then press enter, and there you go. There is a wall. We can also name this site if we want to call it a thing. But we can go with just a tiny little hut here. Something like that. And let's put in a... Let's go into buildings. And we want a door, D. Put a door right there. Okay. Um, that is uh, that's pretty good. If we wanted them to say, build this first, and then phase two, plus... After that stuff is all done, then I want a chair right here and a table right there. And if you have any wood left, which you probably won't because we didn't chop down very much, we can put down a floor on all of this. It's really simple. It's even easier, way easier than Fortress Mode to do this. Now when we're done, we press S and start work. So it brings up this window here. We need 20 logs to do all this, and we have 48. It also wants a table, throne, and door which we don't have any of, because we don't have the carpenter shop. But uh, we can press Y. We will work for eight hours. They will also work to get this thing done. It needs 23 hours to finish this thing. We're going to press W, and it'll just pass the time, and we'll have ourselves a little house out in the wilds. It's going to be a site on the world map that we can venture to later on. And uh, eventually get done. Now we're not, we have finished it here. You can see, it's all done. All done. There's still some wood left. If we want to build ourselves a carpenter shop, we can do that. Back in B, and we can go into buildings, make ourselves a workshop, W, and carpenter shop. And we're going to put it right there. And start work. Okay, we need one log. We've got 28. All my friends will also work. I can switch out if I want to work. I can tell them to work, and I can go walk off and do whatever I want to do, but that's fine. I will help them out. I'm a good leader. We'll build this thing. And there we go, we now have a carpenter shop. So in this carpenter shop, we can craft chairs, log uh, doors, and all that, and finish up our house if we wanted to. But uh, for now, let's just press Z. Well, first let's eat. Let's eat uh, array. And um, we're going to go ahead and snooze. We're going to press Z. Uh, sorry, Shift-Z. And we're going to sleep for 
eight hours until dawn, whatever we want to do, we're going to just sleep until dawn, D, and then enter. And then once dawn passes, we will no longer be drowsy. You can see the asterisks walking around here. These are other adventurers walking around in the world. They may be uh, they may be bad, they may be good, they're just random things that are just sort of wandering around in the world that uh, may want to kill us. Uh, down here, as we mentioned, I am on the ground right now. I press S to stand up. Um, and I still am very hungry and very thirsty. Let me make a campfire real quick and get uh, get back to moving. If you press Z, it brings you to this page. This shows all of our uh, skills that we chose before. We're a, uh, a dabbling woodcutter. We're a talented axe man, proficient shield user. Uh, we are a bit thirsty hungry. We've got also our things that we saw at the character creation screen. S will give us our attributes that we saw before. Uh, in time, these will these will get better if we do things. Superhuman strength. Uh, H for health. How do we feel? We're thirsty and we're hungry. We can scroll over. No wounds. No treatment. No history. We're doing good. This is how we see our health uh, in this menu. So if we're, uh, we can't walk or something, that'll show up right there. K for kills. We can see we killed that goblin. And there he is. And what year we killed him. We also can look at description and we can see myself. Any of my injuries would show up here as well. I can also give myself a nickname there. So that is the Z menu. But uh, I think we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and continue on. I have eaten and drinking. I'm still kind of hungry and thirsty because I put it off for so long. But let's go and fast travel again. Uh, I didn't name the site, did I? Let's name it. Uh, B, name site, shift in. We're going to name it uh, Raw Wing. How about... Um, well, my name's Anger, right? How about Anger Wing? There we go. Excellent. Escape, done. There we go. This is now Anger Wing. So whenever we play the game from now on, this will be here. So we can see it on the sites. Uh, something may happen here. Who knows? Time may pass and exciting things may happen here. But we're going to find our way to that Hydra. We are very, very nearly there. And you can see that spot we saw because we talked to somebody. It shows up here. But we can't actually see it on the map just yet. Because we can't see it until we get a little closer. I'll walk around here and see if we can find... Oh, there it is. Right there. Right there. So let's go over here. We can't go through the mountains like that. But we can go around and try to find this place. There is a few... See, he may be this thing. It could be him right there. There's a lot of things walking around here. I don't know what it is. Maybe things trying to find the Hydra. But let's go walk in and say hello. There's a cave right here. So let's stop right here. And see if we can find this cave. And say hello to the Hydra and then die immediately. As we're walking around, if we can't find the thing, we can see it mentioned up here in the compass. As I mentioned before, because we know it's here, E, it's east. And there is our little blip. We have to go due east to try to find his spot. And uh, hopefully find it before he, uh, you know, eats us. And we are on top of it now. It's right here somewhere. So we can look around and there's probably some sort of cave thing somewhere that we can find that will uh, lead us to wherever he is. I'll see. I'll do some hunting around see if I can find this thing. Here I was looking for a cave. Some sort of entrance. And uh, there he is right there. L will get us to look at him. We can scroll over here, look at the Hydra. A frail Hydra. Yeah, right. Press A. We can see a description. A dragon-like monster with seven biting heads. And yes, it does have seven heads. It will chew our face off. But um, well, we might as well go ahead and say hello. But let's go. Uh, you guys, uh, why don't you guys go first? Wait, are you running away? Where did it go? Did it run away? I have found him again. There he is. We're not letting him get away this time. Hydra. We could sneak up on him if we wanted to. Um, we could creep, but no, we'll just uh, we'll walk up to him. Let's uh, let's try to entice him. We're gonna press T and we're gonna throw our large copper dagger at him. Press press C and we're gonna go ahead and highlight him. And press Enter. Spinning dagger misses the frail Hydra. I think he's at he's he sees this now. I will have my revenge. Uh, yeah, Sabu and uh, Sesba are going to die immediately. We're gonna go after. So here he comes. Hydra attacks Shezpa, but he jumps away. Hydra misses Shezpa. Everyone's missing. Lots of missing going on. Hydra has latched on firmly onto Sabu. Sabu stabs the frail Hydra in the right rear foot with a copper long sword, uh, tearing the fat, blocking away. Shezpa is attacking. So yeah, they're all in there. I'm going to go ahead and get in there, too. I went in. Sabu losing... Uh, the Hydra shakes Sabu around by the neck. So Shabu bites down... Or the Hydra bites down on Sabu, shakes him around by the neck, and now there's arteries being torn. He's he's losing hold of his shield and his sword. Sabu's on the ground. Sabu's down. 
He bites Sabu in the upper leg. Uh, he bites Sabu again, bites Sabu again. Sabu is missing. He's still trying to swing, but he's not doing very good. Uh, bite him in the head. Jespa is still there. Uh, bashes the Hydra in the fourth head, right? He has seven heads. Not looking good for us. The cloak is getting ripped to shreds. Bad things are happening. We're going to get in there. Sabu bites the frail Hydra. <laughs> Sabu, is, my friend, is biting the Hydra as well. Tearing the scale on uh, the first head. Sabu is still getting shaken around by the Hydra. There is a uh, neck muscle getting torn apart. Arteries are being torn apart. Shakes Sabu around by the neck. Uh, bad things are happening to Sabu. He's latched on firmly to... Bite Sabu in the left ear. And the injured part is ripped into loose shreds. So his ear is gone. Twists the head. Tearing apart skin. Sabu's still trying to... He's still awake. But he's not doing well. Shaking Sabu around by the head. The skull collapses. And Sabu has been struck down. No more Sabu. So it's just me, Shezba, and a lot of heads on a Hydra. So we're going to go with the Shift A. He's attacking me right now. So we can try to block this thing. We're, we're decent at, at blocking. Let's, um, we can try. We'll try. We're going to go with C. We're going to try to block. I don't know what we're going to block. Bites or claws. Uh, maybe we should just dodge. Because we can't block all this. So let's dodge. We're not a very good dodger. We're going to try it. We're going to dodge to the north. And there we go, we did it. He claws at me. Um, he claws at my teeth, and my teeth went flying off. He bites me in the upper leg. Um, not looking good. I fell over. He has hurt my leg so much I've fallen over. Shezba is is uh, missing him. I am now bleeding, so I can press Shift C or Shift Z. I'm sorry, Z, not Shift. Just right Z, and we can go to health, and we can see I am heavy bleeding right now. I'm in slight pain. I'm a bit thirsty. I've lost my ability to stand because my leg has been cut, cut apart and bleeding. Cut apart, cut open, I'm in bad shape. So, now, he's too far away from me. We can throw something at him. Let's throw uh, some ice at him. That'll show him. Spinning ice misses the Hydra. Uh, Shezba's having a bad day. So, uh, he's been clawed. Shezba's been clawed by the Hydra. The Hydra's biting him. The Hydra's latched on firmly a couple of times. And uh, Sabu jump bite is really dead. I must let grief pass me by, says Shezba. Yeah, it's a bad day, Shezba. And, uh... Shezba has been torn apart. He's losing hold of his things. Shezba's still punching, though. And, uh, he's latched on firmly multiple times. But he's here on me. We can attack. Let's attack... Um, the Hydra. He's right now... The Hydra right now is recovering from attacking Shezba. So he's, he's not attacking him at the moment. So we're gonna go for him. And we can strike him. We can strike him. We have a nice, easy strike on the upper body. We can see all the different necks he has, because he's a Hydra. He's got loads of different necks and heads and all of that. But they're kind of difficult strikes. So we're going to go with a nice, easy upper body strike. We're going to see if we can just... Um, let's just hack at it. Nice and easy hack. We could bite him if we wanted to. We could scratch him. But we're going to go with a hack. You hack the Fell Hydra in the upper body. Uh, tearing the scale. So there we go. Shespa is still losing. He lost hold of his boot. And his sock. Uh, he's been shaken around by the foot. The foot has been ripped away from the remains of the fell Hydra's grip. So you shit, you, you grab. Shespa apparently grabbed the foot and yanked it out. Okay. Um, oh no, it sailed off. Okay, so he bit it and it sailed off in an arc. Gotcha. Attack him again. He is still attacking the maceman. So um, let's get him again. Strike him. We're going to go for... Can we maybe chop a head off, you think? We could go for his tail. Let's try to top his tail off. Hack. We missed. Shespa doesn't feel good. Shespa has been struck down. So now it's us. I can't stand up, but I can still swing. He. Oh, <laughs> uh, there's eight heads. Is it eight heads? Or is it seven heads? I don't remember what it was. What a Hydra has. <laughs> okay. Strike. Um, lower body. Let's see if we can get a neck. Let's go for... The fourth neck is a tricky strike, but very square. Let's go for that one. We're going to hack at it. Um, he attacks at me, but the, it's blocked by my shield. I'm doing good at blocking things. Uh, I missed. Right. He claws at you in the upper front teeth. and so I'm losing all my teeth here. I'm like that, that, that the goblin earlier. So we're going to attack again. Shift A. Strike. We're going to go for a difficult strike to the... Let's go with the fifth neck. It's square if we can get it. We're going to hack. We missed. Lost hold of my shoes and socks because he is shaking me around by my leg. 
And my leg has fallen off. My leg has been ripped away. Um, hmm. Okay. Striking again. We're going to go for a upper body. Let's just... Um, let's bite him. No, that didn't go well. He bites me in the lower body. Uh, he latches on firmly. He's shaking me around. I missed my bite. And I have given in to the pain. And he claws me in the head. Pulling the neck. Tearing apart the skin. Bruising the fat. I have bled to death. There is an adventure mode tutorial. A nice rundown on how you can find a quest. Some of the keys. You can see your inventory. You can go camping. You can you can feed yourself. You can find quests. You can find gear. You can steal gear if you want. You can find people to join you. And you can go on quests. So most of them are easier than killing hydras. But um, thanks again for watching. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. I will try to answer anything in there. I'll also leave a link to a, a, uh, a helpful key bindings thing as well. Remember, you can always press question mark to bring up any sort of uh, key bindings or any sort of help you may need uh, here. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time.